going to demonstrate what happens when you add a new pluggable database in a data guard configuration. So I have two screens here. The one with the back background is the primary, okay, and the one with the white background is the standby. So I'm just telling the standby error log. I have some transactions running in the background, so you can see what happens when creating a standby, a new pluggable database in a standby while there are still online transactions happening and being replicated from the primary to the standby. So before you create that new pluggable database, you would always verify the parameters. Okay, so this is where the default location is for new pluggable databases. And I just want to verify that I'm not doing a file name convert also. So it's whatever I'm creating at the primary will also be the same at the standby. So in both cases, the primary and the standby the new data files will be created under U02 order data. I can also verify from my standby. That is, it is open. And actually, it's open read only. So actually, I have it open in uh, data guard, uh, active data guard, basically. So it's the other pluggable databases can still be accessed while I'm creating a new database so you can see there are transactions happening in the background the current log sequence is 89 and it's actually applying 89 because the redo is being checked by the log writer from the primary to the standby it doesn't have to wait for the archive log to be created but I'm also forcibly generating archive logs in my transaction volume, so there will be new archive logs also coming in. So this is my, the black is my primary. So my pluggable database will be called PDB Nov22. That's the username and that's the password for the admin user, which will be the DBA user for this PDB alone. So as soon as, as soon as I start creating the pluggable database, it's going to be adding data files to the primary, and then it'll be replicating that at the standby. So you can see here, the data files have been created at the standby as well. So it's added the files to the primary and then copying them to the standby. My global, uh, my DB unique name in the standby is, has stdby also. So although the db create file list is u02 or data, the db unique name is being forced to sh show that this is my standby location actually. So all the new files that are created at the primary are also created as a standby. I can verify that. So this is my primary location. So it doesn't have uh, the stdby inside the folder name because the db unique name is the default database name. And these are the three new files which were created, system, sysox, and undo for this new pluggable database. And at the standby, because I can show you here, My DB name includes stdby, so the actual file created is under a stdby file path.
while here it doesn't have that so this is my primary location file path and this is my standby location file path as soon as it creates the files at the primary it will create the files at the standby as well with the db unique name as part of the file file path let me just exit from here and so you can see new archive logs are still being applied because there are transactions running in the other pluggable databases So I was using this PDB HKC with for to run transactions. This is the new pluggable database that was created. It start is mounted but not open. So once I open the new pluggable database at the primary, I can do transactions in new in this new pluggable database as well. Well, there are already transactions running in the other databases. There is PDB new, PDB HKC, and so on. Of course, when I open the the pluggable database, the primary doesn't show anything in the alert log at the standby. That is fine. So I could actually create a new pluggable database to use it permanently, or I could use it to do some tests scenarios in a data guard environment with primary and standby. Do some testing verify that data is moved over to the standby and so on and if I want I can later drop it as well so for, for so if I just go back to sysdb on the primary okay let me just op uh, connect to that database Remember, I have only one user here, which is now 22 ADM. Okay, so this is a new pluggable database. By default, although I've created an admin user, he does not have any privileges. There. We actually have to grant him privileges. Can I do a grant DBA? Okay, then so now to do ADM is a user, remember, in the pluggable database. And as soon as I create a table, it actually meant that the system data file got expanded in the standby as well you can see pdb now 22 system data file got expanded because i created some more data in the system data file so the standby also got expanded for the new data so that's how you could test data creation in a new plug database i could have gone and created users and additional table spaces and put data in those table spaces and done that but now let's assume that my testing is completed. I want to drop this pluggable databases. Pluggable database. So I go back to sysdb on the primary. Oops, sorry, not twenty-two. What is the PDB not twenty-two? So I close the pluggable database first. And then I can drop it from the primary. So here it will not, it just gives me an error that uh, since I have not unplugged it, it cannot drop data files. So I have not unplugged it. Uh, 
So I would, I would have to drop, I would have to unplug the database, uh, unplug the database or I use the included directory files call in the drop uh, statement itself. So remember if you are dropping a PDB, you cannot just drop it without unplugging it or you cannot drop it without including the data files clause. So we are going to observe what happens at the standby when I drop the PDB at the primary. See? As soon as I drop the PDB at the primary, the standby also deleted the files. So these are removed from the standby. So all this is because A, I have redo shipping from the primary to the standby. B, I have DB create file dust properly configured for the default location. I have DB unique name configured to specify dif different subdirectory for the standby. So this is useful if the standby is on the same server as the primary for testing. But here I have two different servers. But it's a good idea to define a different DB unique name because when you have multiple standbys, each one will have its own unique name in any case. And once you create a plug up database, you can open it in the primary, do some transactions and like we saw here, the standby will also resize, expand and then when you want to drop the pluggable database, you close it at the primary and then you drop it with the including data files clause.